In this problem, we appear to have a hypothesis test, and looks like there's two means. We have mu1 and mu2. If we look at the last sentence, it says, test the claim that the contents of cans of diet soda have weights with a mean that is less than the mean for regular soda. So this is a hypothesis test for two means. So the first step in any hypothesis test is to write down the null and alternative hypotheses. So in this case, the null is simply mu1 equals mu2. It's always this. Whenever it's two means, it's always mu1 equals mu2. Then the sentence here tells us cans of diet soda have weights with the mean that is less than. So mu1, you see here, is diet. So we want the population mean weight of the cans of diet soda to be less than the mean weight of regular soda. Steps two and three we do in stack crunch. So whenever we have means in a problem, we have to decide between using Z or T. Most of the time it's T. Basically, if they give us the population standard deviation anywhere in the problem, so if they give us the pop standard deviation, we use Z. In this case, they would have to give us two standard deviations, right? Because there's two things. And if they don't give it to us, so if they don't give the pop standard deviation, population standard deviation, we would use T. So in this case, they give us the sample standard deviations. They don't give us the population standard deviations. S is the sample standard deviation. So we use T. So in this problem, we're going to use T. OK, so now we'll go to StatCrunch to do the question. So again, I think most of the time, if not all the time, we'll be using T. But it's always good to check. If it says population standard deviation anywhere and it doesn't, uh, we would use uh, Z. But they don't. They don't give us that. There, so it's T. So you click on Question Help, and you click on StatCrunch. And I'm going to click this to make it bigger. All right, and we want to use T. So it's stat, T stats. Okay, and we have two samples, so we're going to pick two sample, and then with summary. So stat, T stats, two sample with summary. Then we have to enter the information. Now the information um, is in StatCrunch is uh is right here in the homework rather. So I didn't write it down this time because it's already nicely written down over here. So uh, let's go ahead and and plug it in. So we have our n, that's 27. Um, x bar, that's the sample mean. Okay, uh, It's 0 0.7995, so 0 0.79955. n is the sample size, by the way. Sample standard deviation is the s, so 0 0.00445. Okay, looks good. Sample mean for the second one is 0 0.81, 0 0.81, 371. And the sample standard deviation here is 0 0.00741. And the sample size here is 27. Everything looks okay. Um, let me just check everything. It's really easy to mess up on these. So x bar is our sample mean. Looks okay. Uh, S is our sample standard deviation. Looks okay. Sample size is alright. Sample mean here looks okay. Everything looks good. Okay, so now we have to figure out which symbol to pick. So we said it was less than, so we change this to less than. Leave this at zero. It's the same thing as what we have written here. If you add mu2 to both sides of this equation here in StatCrunch, you get mu1 equals mu2. So same thing. Okay, let's click Compute. All right, and it wants the, we have the test statistic and the p-value. So our test statistic is always step two. So t equals negative eight. 0.5124, and then the p-value in this case, uh, it says less than 0 0.0001, so just go ahead and put zero. Step four, we have to decide whether or not whether to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis. Whenever the p-value is smaller than our alpha, we reject. In this case here, our alpha is right here. It's 0.05. So our p-value is smaller than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis, reject h sub 0. And then step 5 is our interpretation. We always start by mentioning the level of significance. So at the, in this case, it's 5% level of significance, level of significance. Whenever you reject h sub 0, there is sufficient evidence to support h1. If you fail to reject, there is not. So in this case, we reject. So there is 
sufficient evidence sufficient evidence to support H1. So to claim that mu1 is less than mu2. So the mean weight of uh, diet soda cans is less than the mean weight of regular soda cans. You can get it here from the last sentence that the cans of diet soda have Weights with a mean, I'll just say mean weight, a mean weight less than that for regular soda. Just paraphrase it just a little bit to save time. Regular soda. All right, let's go ahead and get the answers. So looks like the first choice is less than, so check answer. Yes, well done. The test statistic, it wants two decimals. It's negative 8.51. Let's try it. Good stuff. P-value should be 0. Let's try that. Fantastic. Uh, and we reject it. We, uh, we rejected, so there is. So reject, there is. So it's going to be this last one here. Reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the cans of diet soda have mean weights that are lower than the mean weight for the regular soda. Yep, so it's D. I think it's going to want a confidence interval now. Yep, it wants a confidence interval. Now, this is the tricky part. So if you watched the previous video on figuring out the confidence interval, confidence level, um, this is, that's really helpful. But let me just explain it again. So it wants a confidence interval, but it's not giving us the level. So the thing is, it's a one-tailed test, right? So whenever it's less than or greater than, to figure out the level, you first multiply the alpha by 2. then you do one minus that. And that's going to be our confidence level. Boom. So again, whenever it's less than or greater than and you're figuring out the confidence level, you first have to multiply the alpha by 2 and then do one minus that. Always, every single time. If it was not equal to, you would just do one minus alpha. So like if it was not equal to here, the level would be 0.95. But because it's less than, we first have to multiply it by 2. All right, let's go ahead and find the confidence interval. So we click on stack crunch. I'm going to click on this, and we go to stat, t, to sample with summary. Okay, we have to be really, really careful here with these numbers. It's very easy to mess up in these problems. Only one number wrong, and then the whole thing is wrong. So 27 is the sample size. X bar is 0.79955. The sample mean is... Oh, that was the sample mean. See, I messed up. <laughs> the sample mean is 0 0.79955. 0 0.79955. The sample standard deviation is 0 0.00445. Here the sample mean is 0 0.81371. Sample standard deviation is 0 0.00741. And then sample size is 27. Let me just check that. I, very paranoid, very easy to mess up here. So that's our X bar. That's our standard deviation, looks okay, and there's our sample size. There's our sample mean for the second one, for the regular soda. There's our sample standard deviation, and then there's our sample size. It's a confidence interval. We said it was 90. We said it was 90. Let's see how many decimals it wants. It wants three. Okay, so I'll click Compute. All right, so let's carefully write it down. So in this case, the level, so I'll write it down here. The lower limit, sorry. Lower limit is negative 0 0.017. Upper limit is negative 0 0.011. So we have only negative numbers in our confidence interval. That means that the first mean is smaller. Remember, if you have positive numbers, the first one's bigger. Negative numbers, the first one's smaller. Positive and negative, you can't say anything. So we have negative numbers only. That means that the mean weight is smaller. That actually agrees with the conclusion of our hypothesis test, right? It, we're saying that the mean is smaller for diet soda. So the confidence interval and the hypothesis test both agree on the conclusion. A lot going on in these problems. It's a lot, a lot of stuff. It's good, though. It's good. It's good mathematics. Excellent. Does the confidence interval support the conclusion of the test? Absolutely, right? So yes, because the confidence interval contains only negative values. So click check answer. And that's it. So I hope that hope this video uh, was helpful. That's it.